All right, let's take our Bibles and go to the book of James, James chapter 1. James chapter 1, and we're going to be in verses uh, 1 through 8. So James chapter 1 and verses 1 through 8. James, a servant of God and of the Lord Jesus Christ, to the twelve tribes which are scattered abroad, greeting. My brethren, count it all joy when you fall into diverse temptations, knowing this, that the trying of your faith worketh patience. But let patience have her perfect work, that ye may be perfect and entire, wanting nothing. If any of you lack wisdom, let him ask of God, that giveth to all men liberally, and upbraideth not, and it shall be given him. But let him ask in faith, nothing wavering, for he that wavereth is like a wave of the sea, driven with the wind and tossed. For let not that man think that he shall receive anything of the Lord. A double-minded man is unstable in all his ways. Let's go to the Lord in prayer. Father, we do thank you again for the day that you've given us. Thank you, Father, for the opportunity to be in the Lord's house tonight. Thank you for, uh, Lord, just watching over us throughout today. Thank you, Father, for blessing us with each and every day. And Lord, thank you for just guiding our steps according to your will. And thank you, Father, for allowing your word to be a lamp unto our feet, a light into our path. And pray, Lord, you would direct our hearts tonight. Lord, give us, uh, Father, just help us to be able to focus on you tonight and to hear from heaven. Pray that you'd bless your people in a very special way, Lord, through the word of God. Thank you, Father, for giving us your word. Lord, it's very precious to us. We know that it's truth. We know it will never steer us in the wrong direction, but it, always, it will always point us to Christ, and we thank you for that. Father, I ask that you would please bless our time tonight, for it's in Christ's name we pray, amen. So in James, we're going, to, we're going to be talking tonight about thriving through difficulty, thriving through difficulty and how we can overcome difficulties, and obviously the quick and simple answer is we can through Jesus Christ. But I want to kind of go through these verses tonight. And really think about the purpose for difficulties, because uh, often we do face difficulties in our life, uh, different situations that we were not uh, expecting. And any mature Christian uh, will be looking at difficulties and, and be asking the question, Lord, what do you want me to learn through this difficulty? Because as we mature in our faith, we come to realize that nothing happens by accident. Uh, everything is ordained by God in our life, and God is always moving in our life and always working in our life, working in our faith and on our faith, trying to stretch our faith, trying to help us to grow in the Lord and to help us to become mature Christians so that we can not just be an example of the believers, but to also help those that are coming behind us. We want to be able to leave our faith to those behind us to give an example uh, to the younger generation on how to live for the Lord and how to really trust the Lord in troubled times. And James, as he writes to the 12 tribes which are scattered abroad, that's exactly what he is encouraging them with. Uh, his letter is that they are to keep their eyes focused on the Lord, that God is going to do great things through their trial, because it's always, God is always looking to glorify himself in the life of his people. He's always looking uh, for us to lift up Christ and to uh, point people to Christ. So as we think about thriving through difficulties, and no doubt, again, we've been through difficulties just in the last year, uh, even just towards the end of the year as well. Uh, but when you think about just our faith, all right, somebody again might be asking, you know, what's the point of difficulties? I thought when you became a Christian that you know, all difficulties would go away and it would just be a bed of roses uh, from the moment of salvation until you meet your Savior face to face. But if that was the case, then obviously our faith would never be tested. Our faith would never be stretched. Our faith would never grow and we would never learn to really trust in the Lord and to follow him by faith. So the first thing I want us to think about tonight is the fact that God's grace shines through our adversities. Through our adversities, God's grace shines through. And we look at verse number one. James, a servant of God and of the Lord Jesus Christ, 
to the twelve tribes which are scattered abroad, greeting. He says in verse 2, My brethren, count it all joy when you fall into diverse temptations, knowing this, that the trying of your faith worketh patience. First thing I want us to think about tonight is the fact that there is a heavenly purpose in our difficulties. There is a heavenly purpose in our difficulties. Go to Romans chapter 8, very familiar verse, but go to Romans chapter 8 and look at verse 28. As you turn there, I want you to think about one of the heavenly purposes of difficulties is to develop our faith. Again, as God's people, God's people are on different spiritual levels. There are those that are newly saved and they're, they're getting grounded in the faith. They're becoming rooted in Christ. And then you have the mature Christians who have been around the block a few times and, and they know that God is faithful and yet their faith is tested as well. And no matter what level we are spiritually, God is always looking to use things in our life to help better us and to help us to become more conformed into the image of Christ. Again, we're reminded in Romans chapter 8 and verse 28, we know that all things work together for good to them that love God, to them that are called according to his purpose. And again, reminding us that we are called to the purpose of God. God has a purpose for our life. It's just not about gaining wealth on this earth. It's not just about being blessed with provisions, but it's about being transformed more into the image of Christ, becoming more like Christ, not just in appearance. Because remember, uh, when, when Peter and those uh, disciples were in front of the r religious rulers, uh, specifically Peter and John, when the man was healed at the temple, and uh, they said, you know, these were ignorant fishermen, but they took notice they had been with Jesus. Something was different about them. And that should really show out in all of God's people's lives, that there's something different about us because we are growing. Though we may not be as intellectual as some people are, yet they will see the wisdom that God's people has because we have the wisdom of God. We're walking in the wisdom of the Lord. Uh, go to 1 Corinthians chapter 10 and verse 13. 1 Corinthians chapter 10 and verse 13. The first purpose, obviously, of, of difficulties is to develop our faith, but then also the difficulties are to there to test our faith as well. And, and when I just think about our faith being tested, difficulties being allowed in our life, again, sometimes difficulty comes because of a wrong choice, because of a wrong decision. But many difficulties that God allows is for, there are for our benefit, all right? Not that we did anything wrong. I mean, the only per person I can think of that just comes to my mind is Job, who, who loved the Lord. He eschewed evil. He walked up rightly before the Lord, yet God allowed some difficulty in his life to test his faith, to prove his faith, to stretch his faith. And obviously God blessed him on the other side of that difficulty, and God's the one that allowed it. And we've got to remind ourselves that, that when a difficulty comes, uh, if you know without a shadow of doubt you are not doing anything wrong, yes, still a sinner saved by grace, but you know without a shadow of a doubt I did not do anything to bring this on, then you seek the Lord and asking God, Lord, help me to stand the test. Help me to weather the storm. Help me to get to the other side so you're glorified and Christ is lifted up. You look at 1 Corinthians chapter 10 and verse 13. There hath no temptation taken you, but such as is common to man. But God is faithful, and we're so thankful that God is faithful. I mean, we could just stay right there on that, on that little phrase and just rejoice in the fact that God is faithful. And that is something we have to remind ourselves and, and pray and ask the Holy Spirit to bring to our mind and to, and to help our hearts to be fixed upon when difficulties come that God is faithful. God is always faithful in our life because he started a good work on the day of our salvation and he's going to continue it until the day of our redemption, until the day we see Christ face to face. But there hath no temptation taken you but such as is common to man. But God is faithful who will not suffer you uh, to be tempted above that you're able. I don't know if you've ever been, a, been in a difficult situation and you felt pressed out, pressed out of measure. You felt like, 
I cannot take any more. I mean, why is God allowing this? And the Bible says that God's not going to allow you to be tempted above that you're able to. And again, it's really not our strength that helps us to get through difficulties, is it? It's the strength of Christ. I can do all things through Christ which strengtheneth me. The Lord has grace for us in our life, and obviously his grace is our strength. So it is to develop our faith, have the, the difficulties that God allows. It is to test our faith, but also I want you to think about uh, it is to display our faith. Our faith is to be displayed. Look at Romans chapter 5, if you would. Go to Romans 5, and we're going to go to 1 Peter chapter 1. Romans chapter 5, and look at verse number 3. Uh, verse number 3 of Romans chapter 5, and not only so, actually back up if you would. Let's just back up to verse number 2. But by whom also, speaking of Christ, by whom also we have access by faith into this grace, wherein we stand and rejoice in hope of the glory of God. And not only so, but we glory in tribulations also, knowing that tribulation worketh patience. Patience, experience, experience, hope, and hope make it not a shame, because the love of God is shed abroad in our hearts by the Holy Ghost, which is given unto us. So you think about when God allows difficulties in our life, it is to develop our faith, to continue to strengthen our faith, and to stretch our faith, and to build our faith, but it is to help our faith to be seen. It is to help our faith to be seen. There are people not only other Christians, other believers that need to see another believer's faith in action, but even the lost, even those that are around us that we're trying to be that example uh, to the lost. We're trying to be the, be the light and be the salt that Christ calls us to be. And we have to allow our faith to be on display. I mean, uh, I believe it was, in fact, it may be... Uh, might be James. I might have been Paul. Let me think here. Hold on one second. Well, I can't remember what it was, but when you think about just your faith being on display, I forget who it was, but uh, one of the, it might have been Paul in one of his letters was talking about you know, your faith needing, needing to be seen. You know, we could talk about faith, but it needs to be seen where people need to see our faith in action. I think, it, I think it is in the book of James. But again, you know what? I can say I have faith, but if my faith is never tested, what good is it? I can say I have faith in a chair, but if I never sit in it, do I really have faith in the chair? You know, if I'm, if I'm a little leery about it, no, but our faith in action where, you know what, I trust that that pew will hold me up and I go and I sit down. I mean, yeah, it's, it's the simplest example, but usually no one thinks about sitting in, in, in a chair. Unless it's a chair you've never sat in before and you're kind of like, well, it looks kind of old. But I guarantee you, nobody tonight thought about sitting in your pew. I sure didn't. When I came up here, I didn't, you know, check it out and, and make sure it would hold me up. I just sat down because I expected it too. And really, that's our faith in action. Our faith needs to be displayed. And when God tests our faith, he wants it to be displayed. Again, when you think about Job, God's the one that brought Job up to the devil and say, and told the devil, asked the devil, have you considered my servant Job? And God tells him, tells the devil how, how great Job is faithfully, how he is in his relationship to the Lord. And, we, and when you read the book of Job, you see Job's faith in action. When you read the epistles, uh, you see Paul's faith in action. You see Timothy's faith in action. You see Peter's faith in action. You see all these men and women, Ruth, Esther, all these people in the Bible, their faith in action, and you see it when there are difficult moments. Because if there's no difficulty, then we're, our faith doesn't get exercised. Our faith does not get tested. So when difficulties come, we know that there's a heavenly purpose for it. And we also know that there is a process that we go through in difficulties. I want you to look back at 
uh, James chapter 1. And I want you to look at verse number 3. James chapter 1, verse number 3. Knowing this, that the trying of your faith worketh patience. But let patience have her perfect work, that ye may be perfect and entire, wanting nothing. So when you think about there's a heavenly purpose in our difficulties, but then there's a biblical process that we go through in our difficulties. I want you to look at chapter 4 of James and look at verse 10, because one of the processes is humility. It is to humble us at times. It is for us to walk in humility with the Lord. In James chapter 4, you look at verse 10, the Bible says, Humble yourselves in the sight of the Lord, and he shall lift you up. Now, as God works with you through your difficulties, God wants us to yield to him. God wants us to yield to him. Again, sometimes the human nature is to buck up against the system. The, sometimes the human nature, when we don't want to go through difficulties and, we're, and we don't believe that we should, we believe that it's unfair, uh, we could really resist what God's doing in our life and God wants us to submit to it. Again, when you think about Job, Job had the, he had the perfect response. In fact, go to Job chapter 1. He had the perfect response at the beginning of his trial, at the beginning of the difficulty that was coming into his life. In fact, in my daily Bible reading, I'm, I'm in Job, and uh, I just read chapter 1 and still uh, just astounded by just the faith of Job after hearing everything he heard. I want to read several verses, starting at verse number 1. Uh, there was a man in the land of Uz whose name was Job, and that man was perfect and upright and one that feared God and eschewed evil. And there were born unto him seven sons and three daughters. His substance also was 7,000 sheep and 3,000 camels and 500 yoke of oxen and 500 she-asses and a very great household. So this man was the greatest of all the men of the east. I mean, God just has tremendously blessed Job and blessed his life. But yet, the first thing that the Bible says about Job is he feared God. He feared God. He had a relationship with God. He walked with God. And obviously, you continue on. It's the uh, conversation between God and the devil. And uh, you get down to, <clears throat> down to verse number 13. And there was a day when his sons and daughters were eating and drinking wine in their eldest brother's house. And there came a messenger unto Job and said, The oxen were plowing, the asses feeding beside them. And the Sabians fell upon them and took them away. Yea, they have slain the servants with the edge of the sword, and I only am escaped alone to tell thee. While he was yet speaking, there came also another and said, The fire of God is fallen from heaven, and hath burned up the sheep and the servants, and consumed them, and I only am escaped alone to tell thee. While he was yet speaking, there came also another and said, The Chaldeans made out three bands, and fell upon the camels, and have carried them away. Yea, and slain the servants with the edge of the sword, and I only am escaped alone to tell thee. While he was yet speaking, there came also another, and said, Thy sons and thy daughters were eating and drinking wine in their eldest brother's house. And behold, there came a great wind from the wilderness, and smote the four corners of the house, and it fell upon the young men, and they are dead. And I only am escaped alone to tell thee." I mean, you talk about a moment of time. It wasn't several days this happened, but as each servant was explaining what had happened, there comes another one. Just, I mean, just the difficulties mounting up one right after the other. And then in verse 20, Job arose, rent his mantle, which is a sign of humility before the Lord, shaved his head and fell down upon the ground and worshiped. So Job's response to his difficulties was to fall down before the Lord and to worship. Verse number 21. So Job falls down on the ground. He worships and said, in verse 21, Naked came I out of my mother's womb, and naked shall I return thither. The Lord gave, and the Lord hath taken away. Blessed be the name of the Lord. I mean, what a wonderful response that Job is able to respond with at a very difficult moment in his life, not just because he had a flat tire, 
not just because, uh, you know, it was just one thing that happened. It wasn't a big deal. He lost everything, including his children, in this one moment. But he responds in the right way, worshiping God, humbling himself before the Lord, knowing that, again, like he said, naked I came out of my mother's womb. I mean, I came in this world with nothing. I'm going to go out of the world with nothing, but blessed be the name of the Lord because he's got the right heart and the right mind. That, you know what? My life belongs to the Lord. And if God has allowed this difficulty in my life, then it's for a reason. So, I mean, the first response to difficulties is with humility. It is surrendering to the will of God, even though you may not know what the will of God is. Job didn't know what God's will was and what was going to happen but he knew that his life was in God's hands and he knew he could trust God and he simply humbled himself before the Lord and he worshiped the Lord in humility and he said those words as really praise to the Lord as he worshiped the Lord. Again, in James chapter 4 and verse 10, humble yourselves in the sight of the Lord and he shall lift you up. He'll lift you up in his timing. And no doubt, when you read the book of Job, God lifted Job up. He lifted him up out of, the, out of the ashes as he sits there later on and, you know, he's scraping himself because of the boils. He's sitting in the ashes and all the things he goes through. And yet at the end, God does lift him up. God blesses him. But listen, we do have to remind ourselves that, again, our life does belong to the Lord. And God can do anything he wants. And it's always God never does anything without a purpose. The number one purpose that God does allow difficulties in our life is to bring honor and glory to himself. Because the difficulties that God allows in our, in our life, they are for our good, but they are to be used to worship the Lord. And again, like Job, that should be our first response. And as our faith grows and as we continue to mature in our faith, we will do that more and more and more. That we will, we will learn to let that be our first response, worshiping the Lord and humbling ourselves before him. Look at 1 Peter chapter 5, if you would. 1 Peter chapter 5. Again, as we think about yielding ourselves to the Lord, in 1 Peter chapter 5 and verse 6 and 7, the Bible says, humble yourselves, therefore, under the mighty hand of God, and remembering whose hands you are in, that he may exalt you in due time, casting all your care upon him, for he careth for you. Again, humble yourselves, therefore, under the mighty hand of God, that he may exalt you in due time, casting all your care upon him, for he careth for you. So always keeping a humble spirit of surrender during the times of difficulties, reminding ourselves, even, even at times remembering, okay, I know God is faithful. I know that everything is in God's hands. I can, I can look back in the past of my life and, and see where God's brought me through and God has blessed me and he's brought me to this moment and God will continue to work in my life. Because remember, God has begun a good work in you. The moment you got saved, God started working in your life not just transforming you into the image of Christ, not just stretching your faith and working on your faith, but until the day you see him face to face, he's going to continue working your life, continue helping you get victory in your life, continue to help you and me to be able to see him more clearly, to be able to hear his voice more clearly, to be able to trust him even in the darkest of night when we cannot see a thing and we have no idea what's going on learning not to trust our understanding, but to lean upon the Lord. Humble yourselves, therefore, under the mighty hand of God. I mean, you think about the mighty hand of God, it's not that when difficulties come, oh, God is weak and God, you know, he let this slip through. You know, sometimes people, people that don't understand God, don't know the truth about God, don't know the promises of God, they blame God for difficulties. They blame God for uh, trials in their life and, and, and things not going their way in this country. Yet the Bible says, humble yourselves therefore under the mighty hand of God. 
God's hand's not weak. God's hand will never become weak. He has a mighty hand, and you, are, you and I are in that mighty hand of God, and he is working in our life to bring glory to himself and to help transform us more into the image of Christ and to strengthen our faith. Look at verse 10 of 1 Peter chapter 5, if you're still there. 1 Peter chapter 5 and verse 10. Again, in the biblical process, through our difficulties, God working on us, it's a process of surrender, it's a process of humility, but also maturity, as I've even been saying that, trying to mature our faith. Verse 10 of 1 Peter 5 says, But the God of all grace, who hath called us unto his eternal glory by Christ Jesus, after that ye have suffered a while, gone through difficult moments, make you perfect, meaning mature, establish, strengthen, settle you. I mean, God has that purpose. I mean, and God knows every single one of us better than we do ourselves. I mean, I think I know myself pretty well, but God even knows me better. He knows better our shortcomings. He knows our weaknesses. He knows where he wants to work in our life and to help strengthen our faith and to help us to become more like Christ. And it's all to perfect us, to mature us, to establish us more in the faith, to strengthen us, and to settle us. So God uses all difficulties in our lives for a wonderful heavenly purpose. Again, the human mindset when difficulty, difficulty comes is to run from it, to pray it away. But honestly, a mature Christian will look at difficulties and see the hand of God and see that God has a purpose for it and really to even humble ourselves before the Lord and say, Lord, here am I, thy will be done. I mean, think about Jesus in the Garden of Gethsemane. Jesus, knowing what the Father's will was, still prayed, Father, if it be possible, let this cup pass from me. Nevertheless, not my will, but thine be done. Because the flesh doesn't want to go through difficulty. Your flesh cares about itself. We're always looking out for number one. We're always looking out for ourselves. I and mean, I guarantee you, you trip and you, you start to fall, you're not going to throw your hands behind your back. You're going to throw your hands out in front of you and try to catch on to something. Uh, and, uh, you know, and you're hoping that you, know, you're, you, don't hit, you don't hit the dirt. But when it comes to spiritual matters, that's where we have to really trust the Lord. That's where we really have to let go and let the Lord take control and let the Lord do his will in our life. In 2 Corinthians chapter 12, verse 9, the Bible says, And he, God, said unto me, My grace is sufficient for thee, for my strength is made perfect in weakness. Most gladly, therefore, will I rather glory in my infirmities, that the power of Christ may rest upon me. I mean, these are very familiar verses that, we're, that we look at tonight. We even read this one right here. But just those words that Paul says that the power of Christ may rest upon me. That really should be the heart's desire of every child of God, every born-again believer, every Bible believer, is that the power of Christ would rest upon me. And that really comes by humbling ourselves, humbling ourselves under the mighty hand of God and allowing God to do what his will is, knowing that, you know what, he's faithful, I know that he has thoughts of peace towards me. He has an expected end in things in my life. And if God is allowing it, there's a reason he wants to take me through the difficulties. There's a reason why he wants to test my faith. And I trust him and I will follow him and surrender to him. That goes against the flesh. The flesh doesn't want to do that. The Bible talks about that struggle between the flesh and the, and the spirit where the the, the Bible says the flesh lusteth against the spirit, the spirit against the flesh. The flesh is weak, the spirit is willing, but our flesh is weak. And we have to every day make that conscious choice that I'm going to trust the Lord. I'm going to, to just follow the Lord. Even when I don't understand, I'm going to let him do his will in my life. Last thing I want us to think about 
Look, go back to James, if you would. Now let's look at verse 5 and 6. So James chapter 1, verses 5 and 6. The Bible says, If any of you lack wisdom, let him ask of God. They give it to all men liberally, and upbraideth not, and it shall be given him. But let him ask in faith, nothing wavering. For he that wavereth is like a wave of the sea, driven with the wind and tossed. Verse 7, For let not that man think that he shall receive anything of the Lord. Uh, even verse 8, a double-minded man is unstable in all his ways. You know what? God doesn't want us to be unstable. God has given us stability in Jesus Christ. He is our rock. We can anchor ourselves to Christ. You know, even, even our own uh, motto here uh, at our church is, you know, Bible Baptist Church, it's uh, anchored and guided by God's word. Because it's the truth of God's word, and God's word points us to Jesus Christ. He points, the word of God points us to the solid rock, points us to the one that can give us the wisdom that we need. And even knowing that, yes, I am told through God's word that I can ask for anything in the name of Jesus Christ, and he'll give it to me. But at the same time, having the mindset, you know what? God knows what's best. God knows if what I'm asking for is really what I need. And I'm glad that as we pray, we have, we have an intercessory prayer, uh, prayer-er, prayer person for us, and that is the Holy Spirit who prays for us, who intercedes for us. But if you think about the wisdom, if any of you lack wisdom, let him ask of God. Lord, why, why are you allowing this difficulty? What is it you want me to learn in this difficult moment in my life, what is it that you want me to gain from it? How will this help me to glorify you? How will this help me to lift up Christ in my life? How will this change me more into the image of Christ? So when you think about when he says, If any of you lack wisdom, let him ask of God, that giveth to all men liberally, and upbraideth not, and it shall be given him. Besides the devil, your adversary, warning you, to neglect the word of God, he wants you to neglect prayer. Because you know what? There's, there's, there, there comes strength in prayer. There comes encouragement in prayer. What do you find Jesus do in the Garden of Gethsemane? Praying. He knows he's about to face some difficult hours where he's going to go through the mock trial. He's going to be slapped. He's going to be spit upon. His beard's going to be ripped out. He's going to be hitting with a reed. I mean, all the things that he knows he's going to go through. Yet he's in the Garden of Gethsemane praying, praying to the Heavenly Father about what he's about to face. And the Bible even, the Bible even mentions that at one moment, angels came and ministered to him in the garden to strengthen him. So prayer is very important for the child of God as well as the word of God, but we're told to ask. If any of you lack wisdom, let them ask of God. Pray and seek the Lord. Jesus said in Matthew 7, 7, Ask and it shall be given you. Seek and ye shall find. Knock and it shall be opened unto you. Jesus Christ tells us to seek God for the wisdom in those difficult moments to know what it is that God wants you to do and how to even respond to those moments. Look at Romans chapter 4 if you would. So we're supposed to seek God for wisdom, and we're supposed to ask in faith. Because again, he says, if any of you lack wisdom, let him ask of God that you have it to all men liberally, and he, uh, and it shall be given him, but let him ask in faith. So we're to ask God for wisdom, but then ask in faith. Romans 4 verse 20, speaking of Abraham, he staggered not at the promise of God through unbelief, but was strong in faith, giving glory to God. If you notice, Abraham, the promise that God had given him about having a son, he staggered not at that. He didn't, he did, he didn't stagger it at his age or Sarah's age. The Bible talks about uh, that he was strong in his faith. He trusted the Lord. And that's how God wants our faith to be as well, that we don't stagger at difficulties in our life. We don't stagger at uh, things that we don't understand that God's allowing, that 
We are steadfast in our faith. We're strong in our faith. We've come to a place in our, in our life where we know that without a shadow of a doubt that God is faithful and whatever God is allowing, it's for our good, his glory, and we are just to lift up Christ in our lives so others will see our faith, so they will even see of a reason to ask about the hope that lies within us because they see our faith in action. You know, sometimes, and, and, I, and I know there, there's, a, there's a fine line about a privacy, right? Uh, we don't want everyone to know everything about our life. We want some privacy. And sometimes we even take it forward that we don't tell anybody about any difficulties. We don't ask for prayer requests about difficulties in our life because we don't want people to know. And sometimes we, we might take that even a little too far without thinking about it, but it can go, it can step over into the pride zone where, you know what, I don't want anyone to know because I want people to think that I'm, I'm the perfect Christian, that I have no problems. But that's not what God wants us to do. Yes, we're not to just, you know, talk all about the problems of life and all of our problems, but you know what, we do need when there's prayer request time, and, and we do that here, you know, if someone has a prayer request, some, some difficulty, then what a wonderful thing it is to say, hey, would you pray for this? And the greater thing is that when God answers that prayer and God helps in that situation to come back and give a report to the church or to the person that you even asked uh, to pray with you, because again, it, it really shows our faith in action. It lets people know that, hey, Man, look at what God did. God did this great thing. God came through. God provided. God, uh, God healed. God blessed. Whatever it is that, man, we have a wonderful God that loves us so much and is so involved in our life. Abraham staggered not at the promise of God through unbelief. God doesn't want us to stagger through unbelief. He wants us to be strong in faith, giving glory to God. Go back to James chapter 1, and God promises to give the wisdom, doesn't it? God does promise to give that wisdom, because it says, If any of you lack wisdom, let him ask of God, that giveth to all men liberally. Anybody that wants wisdom and seeks God for it, God promises he gives it, and he gives it liberally, and upbraideth not, and it shall be given him. So we need to be... Seeking God for his wisdom, and God will give us the wisdom, and God gives it liberally. I mean, exactly what we need, God will give it. Psalm 111, verse 10 says, The fear of the Lord is the beginning of wisdom. The beginning of wisdom is fearing God, having an awe for God, having a reverence for God, knowing that God has all the answers, knowing that God, he sees, he knows everything, and humbling ourselves under the mighty hand of God. A good understanding have all they that do his commandments, his praise endureth forever. You know, when you think about just being able to thrive through difficulties, there's up and downs in our lives. There's, there's, there's valleys, there's mountains, but through it all, as we walk with the Lord and as we allow Christ to lead us through this life, and to be that friend that we talked about, that we sang about earlier, the friend that sticks closer than a brother, a friend that we can walk with, and we know that he'll never lead us astray. We know he'll never betray us. He's always there for us. He'll always help us. He'll always carry us through difficult times. But there are times where he'll lead us through those difficult moments. He'll lead us to those valleys in order for him to be glorified and for us to to grow in our faith. But thriving through difficulties is relying on the Lord. It's, remi it's remembering that God has a purpose. It's a heavenly purpose because it is about Him. Truly, and that's what we have to remind ourselves too, too, is that our life is really all about Him. It's all about glorifying Him because He's given us so much. He's given us a wonderful life that testifies of the power of God in our life how he works in our life, how he guides us, and how he even helps us in difficult times, and even he's always there. And I mean, when you read through the Bible, and you just see all the different trials that people went through, and yet 
They kept their faith. Sure, they had their moments where they doubted. But I'm glad that we have a Savior uh, who is, he's really, he's not afraid of our doubts. He's willing to come to us like he came back to Thomas who, who doubted that he had risen from the grave. He came back to Peter who had his moment of, of denying the Lord. He was afraid of what was going on. And yet the Lord comes and, 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 and helps those men to grow in their faith, helps those men to get, to get back on focus. And we think about it, that's just life. God knows our frame. He remembers we're but dust. And yet he still works on us because, remember, he's the one that, that gave us the life. He's the one that breathed life into our lungs. And he's the one that will continue to do the work that he started in us. We just always have to be willing to humble ourselves before him to surrender and to let him do his will in our life so that he gets all the glory and we get a closer walk with him and others see our faith and we'll have somebody asking about the hope that lies within us and we'll be able to share Christ with them. Let's have a word of prayer. Father, we do thank you for uh, just the time that you've given us tonight in your word. Thank you, Father, for just... Uh, the, the truth of the word of God, that it is that lamp unto our feet and light unto our path. It guides us. Lord, it show, gives us everything that we need. Thank you, Father, for the relationship that we have with you. I do pray, Lord, that you would speak to our hearts tonight. I'm sure there's somebody somewhere, Lord, that uh, is struggling with some difficulties in their life. They're not quite sure why you're allowing it. But, Lord, if we would really sit in your presence and meditate upon your word, and really, Father, see the truth of your word, that difficulties come for our good. All things work together for good to them that love God, who are called according to his purpose. And we thank you, Father, that you have a purpose for our lives. Every single person has a purpose, a God-given purpose. And I pray, Lord, that you would continue to help us to, uh, to humble ourselves under the mighty hand of God, to continue to yield ourselves to your will, helping us, Lord, to be a living sacrifice that always has uh, the heart that says, here am I, Lord. I have your way with me. Let me be a vessel unto honor. Father, I ask that you would please bless your people tonight. Continue, Lord, to guide them. Continue, Lord, to help them to faithfully follow you, trusting you. We ask it all in Jesus' name. Amen.